the first set of truths that a spirit can communicate to you or help you with is what I would call the physical. <coughs> or, or you could also call it maybe the scientific, scientific truths. Um, now for a spirit who's passed, a spirit in any condition can investigate scientific truth. So you can be in the depths of hells and have a scientific bent, just like you would have perhaps when you're on Earth, and you can investigate lots of physical and scientific truths. It's quite simple because you can go from place to place as a spirit world, in the spirit world, and experiment. You know, scientists here on Earth, what they do is they create experiments trying to satisfy truths. They're looking for truths in the natural universe. And in the process of doing that, what they do is they create an experiment and they use that experiment to validate or support the evidence for that particular truth, don't they? And that's a general scientific method that is carried forth and enhanced in the spirit world. And a spirit in any condition can do it. So, if a medium is receiving truths about the physical Earth and scientific truths about the physical universe, then obviously the spirit doesn't have to be of high development. And yet, sometimes we become so engrossed with the truth, the physical truth that we didn't know, that we think that spirit must know lots of things, and they do know lots of things you don't know here, but they might still be in the first sphere of the spirit world with some very, very core uh, damaging emotions that they're not even looking at because all they want to do is investigate physical truths. So the lowest form of truth that you can receive as a medium is actually physical truths. That refers to events as well as actions as well as future <coughs> events, as well as, and you can just keep on adding to that list, couldn't you? So, let's, how many of you have gone along to a medium, and Uncle Fred comes along in, in the mediumship, and he tells you that in a few days' time, something's going to happen, and you need to make this decision if it's going to work for you. Now, sure enough, in a few days' time, what he said would happen, happened, and what did you think? Wow. That was amazing, right? But it's really easy for him because he's in a physical, he's in a state where he can look in the physical state. He's not governed by time, so he can look forward and beyond back. He can see more of the conditions of people around you and know what they're thinking and when they're deciding to think, when they will do it, and all those kind of things. They, he can come up with all those things and tell you the event in advance quite easily, particularly if it's only a few days away. And and he can describe it to you. Now, how did that help you develop in love? That's the question I have. It didn't help at all, did it? Did it help you develop your own free will? Probably not. In fact, you became reliant on the spirit telling you, so that's probably probably harmed your free will more than anything. And how did it how did it help you with regard to getting to know God? Well, not at all. Did it help you become reliant on somebody or reliant on yourself? Well, reliant on him, probably. Can you see what's happening? We become seduced by the fact that it was true. But it's really, really easy for him, no matter, it doesn't matter what condition he's in. It's really, really easy for him to present these facts to you. So, for that reason, those truths, and they are truths, they are truths of the physical and scientific universe, and they are truths of your life. But those kind of truths have less, are less valuable, if you like, for your soul. Because they only have a physical effect and many times have a damaging effect on your soul in terms of developing your free will or developing your love and so forth. So those are what I would call the lower, lower truths, the lowest kind of truths, in fact, that you could actually receive.